President Biden wants the U.S. to go green, but he's banning domestic mining critical for green technology, while encouraging more mining abroad where the environmental impacts are worse. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. U.S. President Joe Biden wants you to know that on his watch, American cars are going to be fully electrified, hopefully less combustible than that Tesla. Wasting that much water isn't very green. The Biden administration wants to spend billions of dollars through the Inflation Reduction Act and other measures to ensure that the U.S. can compete against China and green energy. And yes, he's spending billions of dollars to fight inflation which is like fighting a shark with meatballs. But green energy requires a lot of resources to produce. According to the International Energy Agency, a typical electric car requires six times the mineral inputs of a conventional car, not including the steel and aluminum. And it's not just electric cars. Rare earth metals like lithium, nickel, cobalt, manganese, and graphite are crucial to building everything from solar panels to wind turbines, as well as electric batteries, you name it. But Guess who dominates the rare earth market? No, not Steve from Minecraft. Good guess, though. It's China. China has more rare earth reserves and more control over global rare earth mining than any other country. The U.S., on the other hand, imports more than 80% of its rare earth elements from abroad. And a lot of it comes from, you guessed it, China. Even American ammunition relies on China. Yeah, the U.S. is getting bullets from a country that wants to see it destroyed. It's like the Ninja Turtles getting their weapons from Shredder. If you want to learn more about America's military-industrial complex, check out our latest episode on our new channel, Gamers Unbeaten, Near Automata Deconstructs Military-Industrial Complex. Link is below. Now, it's not like the U.S. doesn't have any resources to extract. It's just that the U.S. rarely mines the rare earth minerals within its borders. The U.S. has only one rare earth mine and has no capability to process rare earth minerals. That single mine is in Southern California's Mountain Pass. Meanwhile, China has tons of mines. Although since they're communists, they don't call it a mine. They call it an ours. The Biden administration is backing another mine in Nevada, which may start producing lithium by 2026. But for the most part, the U.S. heavily restricts domestic mining. I guess Biden is more of a Fortnite guy. Recent examples include the Biden administration blocking development in Pebble Mine in Alaska, even though it's one of the world's largest deposits of copper and gold. This was days after the Biden administration also imposed a 20-year mining moratorium in the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness in Minnesota. The year before that, the Biden administration canceled two federal mineral leases in the Superior National Forest, just south of the Boundary Waters. Biden says it's for environmental reasons, though. Part of me wonders if Biden is nervous, miners will uncover even more classified documents he misplaced. Come on, Joe. Environmentalists argue that mining in those areas would produce toxic chemicals that would harm the environment and nearby creatures. They also argued that the bans would help honor Native American territories and protect natural tourism. Those are valid concerns. On the other hand, in the long run, Bans against U.S. mining could blow up in our faces, like a Tesla battery. I'll explain how after the break. Welcome back. The Biden administration is pushing for more green energy, but in order to build the infrastructure for that, the U.S. needs rare earth minerals. Lots of them. The problem is that the U.S. doesn't want to encourage domestic mining. It wants to make sure that it doesn't devastate the local environment. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. We should be doing our best to protect the environment. The problem is sometimes policies with good intentions can still be short-sighted. For example, back in 2017, the state of Maine enacted the nation's strictest metal mining law. This was in response to a 2013 study where researchers found evidence of toxic metals leaking from old mines. As a result, Maine banned all sorts of mines, including open pit mines of more than three acres even though the toxic metals were from outdated and questionable mining practices done in the 1960s. Then, four years after the ban, 
A couple who owns land in Maine found a huge lithium deposit, which would be extremely helpful for powering electric vehicles, not to mention treating depression. Won't someone think of the pharmaceutical companies? And yet, because of the law, the lithium they found can't be extracted. This was a bit of an oversight. Even some proponents for the 2017 Maine law admitted that the law wasn't written with lithium in mind. But that's just one specific example. In general, rather than open up more domestic mining, the Biden administration's policy is to rely on foreign imports, just like with oil. And what better place to extract resources from than Africa? This is easily the second most upsetting thing I learned the U.S. has imported from Africa. The U.S. recently signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the Democratic Republic of Congo and Zambia to finance mining projects. But they aren't exactly the perfect role models for quality working conditions and transparency, especially for children. On the other hand, it's never too early to start your first job. This is an actual photo from the Democratic Republic of Congo of a woman and a child breaking rocks extracted from a cobalt mine. Still, the U.S. State Department claims that it will develop an electric battery supply chain that will be open and transparent and create a just energy transition for workers in local communities. Oh, so things will just magically improve because the minerals will come from overseas instead of the U.S. Are they talking about mining in Africa or fantasy land? Their biggest mineral deposit is gumdrops. Now, whether the U.S. will actually do something about child labor and poor working conditions in those countries is still up in the air. U.S. political intervention overseas has a uh, mixed track record. But it seems hypocritical that the U.S. would fund mining in those countries after calling China out for exploiting children in African mines. It's also hypocritical that the U.S. puts so much emphasis on keeping the environment clean within its borders, yet it's totally okay with other countries with laxer environmental regulations doing the dirty work. Literally. This is like someone bragging about being an animal-loving vegan while ordering a baby otter skin fur coat from Amazon. Both the Democratic Republic of Congo and Zambia have a poor track record when it comes to keeping mines safe for both people and the environment. The DRC has lost over 8% of its trees since 2000, thanks in part to mining. This includes the Kahuzi Biega National Park, one of the last sanctuaries for the endangered eastern lowland gorilla. I haven't seen a mine be such a threat to gorillas since that one level in Donkey Kong country. Meanwhile, in Zambia, many towns are now seeing high levels of lead in the soil. And water pollution related to mining is causing rivers of acid. Many other developing countries with poor environmental regulations face similar issues. Those in turn hurt more people, animals, and the environment. Which is obviously why the U.S. wants to get its minerals from those countries. It's so much cheaper and more convenient when the U.S. doesn't have to worry about the environment or human rights. Meanwhile, doing the mining in the U.S. would be more expensive, but better for the environment. The U.S. has come a long way over the decades thanks to new mining technologies that are a lot more environmentally friendly and less wasteful than before. The U.S. ranks high in environmental performance compared to most countries. And a lot of that is due to federal environmental regulations. So if the U.S. government is going to spend billions of dollars on green energy, it might as well spend it to mine minerals responsibly within its own borders. Better for the earth, better for workers, and on top of that, the U.S. wouldn't have to rely on buying minerals from foreign partners like China. That'd be nice. Maybe the Ninja Turtles wouldn't have to get their weapons from Shredder anymore. So what do you think of mining for green technology? Leave your comments below. If you like the show, remember that we rely mainly on direct support from viewers like you. All it takes is as little as a dollar per episode over on our crowdfunding website, Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered for more. Click the link below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.